assignments in this unit, in one, in starting in 1.3 and all of the assignments there um, forward, you're going to want to create what are called log files. Log files are basically Python's running tally of what's going on or what you're doing within an activity. And it basically serves to me to show me that you're showing your work. So the way we do that is we're going to issue the following command in the Python interpreter. And you'll get in the habit of basically starting this when you open it up. That way, everything you do is recorded. And then you can then submit that as evidence that you went ahead and went through all the activities and, and assignments and whatnot. So here it is. The command is going to be percent log start space dash ORT. And then you're going to put in a file name. And that file name is going to follow the following format. Okay? You're going to use the first initial, then your last name, and then the activity that you are doing, dot log. And you press enter. Now what happens is every time you type something into the interpreter, including when you run functions that you write, including when you type individual commands in code, including when you store variables, that will now be stored into this log file. Okay? So if I type in, for example, um, x equals 5, right? So I'm storing a variable 5 right in there. That's that, like that, right? If I store y equals x plus 7, then it, now that will store y. What if I call up y? I'm just doing some things to show you what's going to happen to the file, right? So all of that stuff that now that you just typed into the interpreter is now being written to your log file. Now when you're done and you're done for the day, you're going to issue the following command to Python to the interpreter. Log stop. And you press enter and then it closes that file and now anything you type after that will no longer be written. I'm going to try to get see if I can get everything on there. Okay, let me minus do that there. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. So that includes everything in there, right? So again, to review, percent log start dash ORT, the file name dot log. One thing that one question that's going to come up. What if you start working? What if you start working on an assignment one day, you stop the log, and then you come back to that assignment and start again? What do you do? If you start the same log, it's going to overwrite that log. Instead, start a new log, but add an additional digit. So for example, if I come back the following day and I'm still working on 132, I can go percent log start dash ORT J Copperthay 132 dash two dot LOG. Right? And now I have I'll have an additional log file and I can pick up where I left off. So sometimes you may have three, four logs for a single assignment, and that's okay. So that's one thing. Now, the other thing that you're going to have is you're going to have code. At the end of your assignment, you're going to have information in the top part of Canopy that will be in code. So just to define a quick function, define sample function, close parentheses, right, and then print hello, right? And that's it. That's the function. Done. Okay? So that's just an example, right? Quick function. When I go to save that, that code is going to be stored generally, or at least initially, in the same directory as your log file. And you can see locally where that is if you look over in the corner of your IPython window. So for example, where my mouse is right now, this reads c colon slash users dot user slash jeffrey dot copper type. Here's that same directory, right? So when I store this file, sample code uh, 132, okay? You don't actually write this function in 132, just want to put that in there, right? Now that file is here. So that's a code file. That's different than a log file. Code files you can, you can store into, into your session and you can use them over and over and over, okay? Also, while I'm, at, while I'm on that topic, when you have made changes to your code, 
you have to remember to run that code so that way you can call it in the interpreter. So the way you do that is you press this green play button right here. Okay, you press it and then you'll notice that it automatically threw in a command into my interpreter to run that function. Now any functions I wrote in that code can now be used in the IPython window. Okay, and also it's also logged in that file as well. That's also logged in the log. Okay, so let me show you where that information is. All right, so if we go to my name, by the way, notice how I bought up a file window here. If I go to the default directory, which is going to be where my name is since I logged into a computer, or if it's your own computer, it will be whatever your profile name is. You'll see there's this directory and there's lots of things in here. Okay, I've got a lot of stuff from using this computer for five years. Okay, so if I go up to the search and I go star.log, I can filter it so that it only displays the log files that I have stored in here. Okay, so see, here's all those log files. There's the one I created just a little bit ago, right? All right, and if I go down here, I think there's one that's open already. No, nope, that one's not in here yet because I have it because I have it open still. Okay. So if I, when I go to install, or sorry, install, when I go to submit that on Google Classroom, that's where that file is located. What if I want to search for my Python files? The Python extension you'll use is .py. So if you do star.py in your search file, it will fire up all of the information, Python files that you have. So in that case, there's that sample code file. Okay. When you're doing these assignments, most of the time you'll be submitting Python code and Python logs as evidence. When you do conclusion questions, you, can, you have a choice. When you do conclusion questions, you have a choice. Number one, you can actually go into your interpreter and type in the answers as comments. So let's say the qu first question, let's say the first question was, um, what do you think of Python? You can type in pound sign, Number one, I like this program a lot. And then that will get stored into your log. So you see, I can open your log and then I can see the answer to the conclusion questions that way. The alternative, of course, is to create your own Google document with the conclusion question answers and submit that. The other alternative to that is to write them down yourself and take a picture and submit it to Google Classroom. Okay, whichever is most convenient for you. Okay. All right, are there any questions I can answer while I'm in the middle of recording this? Okay then. Well, hope this tutorial helps you. If not, just rewind and listen to it again. Have a nice day.